Hey guys, Cody Hoffine with Wholesaling Inc., the number one wholesaling coaching program in the nation. We are going to deep dive everything direct mail in this video. Right now while you're here, click the subscribe button. Hit the bell so it will alert you when we upload new videos. Now let's cut right to it and let's get to direct mail. Okay guys, we have had some awesome, awesome questions regarding direct mail. Is direct mail dead? Is it still working? Uh, what do we put on the postcard? How often should we send the postcards in between like the first time you mail a person? How long should you wait for you mail them a second time? Um, what should it look like? Uh, should you have separate phone numbers for each one of your list? We're gonna be covering all of this right now in this video. So let's go with the first question. And that is, is direct mail dead? Okay, so number one, is it dead? There's so many mixed emotions right now with direct mail. So many people believe that direct mail is dead. You'll go to local RIA groups, the Real Estate Investor Associations, and they're telling you, hey, I went direct mail, I heard direct mail's dead. But you gotta remember who's telling you this. Here's one of the best, some of the best advice I've ever received from one of my mentors. He says, Cody, if you're not willing to trade places with the person that's giving you the advice, do not accept the advice. So let me say that again. If you're not willing to trade places with the individual giving you the advice, do not accept their advice. This is all across the board. You hear people say, why would you own a rental? You're crazy. I hear that tenants do this and this and that and they trash your home. The simple question is, are they in a place that you would ever trade them spots? I will tell you, if not, don't listen to it. The simple question you could ask them, how many rentals have you owned? Oh, I've never owned any, but I heard that tenants do this, this, this. They're not even qualified to give you their answer. So remember, is it dead? Depends who you're talking to. But if you're not willing to trade them spaces or trade spots with them, don't listen to it. Because I'm going to tell you, wholesaling with direct mail is very much alive. Okay? It is not dead. Here's the numbers for 2018. Now that the year is over, we just did a little shy, okay, of a whole year. We did about 1.8 million last year in gross revenue. Direct mail is $900,000 of that 1.8. So 50% of our business came from direct mail. So is it dead? No way and no way would I kill that channel because it brings in so much revenue. So we are always gonna keep direct mail. We're gonna keep that marketing channel going and I would suggest right now, if you wanna build up your numbers and get a big wholesaling business, that you invest in direct mail. The second question, how much direct mail should I send out? So let's put, uh, let's put how many postcards, okay? And what I mean by that is, how many postcards should you consistently send out? Let me be crystal clear, super specific right this second. It's not how many you send out all in one blast in one month. You need to be consistent at it. So if you wanna consistently get paid in wholesaling, you've gotta consistently market, consistently send out direct mail, which will consistently get you on the phone, which will consistently get you on appointments, consistently making offers, consistently getting contracts, and consistently getting paid. That's a lot of steps there, but I want you to realize it's the consistency in this business that's gonna make you a lot of business, or make you a lot of money. So when we're talking about how many postcards, it's not, hey, I'm gonna send out 5,000 pieces this week, and then I'm gonna wait for another six months or six weeks, and I'm gonna send out 5,000 postcards again. No, that's not it. Stay consistent. So what I want you to do, if you really want this phone to ring off the hook, yes, you can just do your own 
yellow letters or you're writing your own pieces and sending them out, you can do that. But if you really want to make this work, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to do to make this work right now? I'm suggesting this, that you send out a minimum of 2,000 to 2,500 pieces a week, okay? Now that sounds crazy, but let me tell you what it's gonna do. It's, it's a numbers game. Wholesaling is all about numbers. It's how many people you can get to ring your phone off this direct mail, okay? So you're gonna get mad because this phone, if you're sending out that many mail pieces, this phone is gonna melt. There's gonna be so many phone calls coming in that you're gonna be so mad that your new iPhone literally just melted right in front of you. That's what you need. You need opportunity. It's all about opportunity, it's a numbers game. There's motivated sellers that are so motivated that you couldn't do anything to mess it up. I could get my 10 year old to get on the phone, talk to him and say, hey, daddy is actually gonna offer you this and he says you just need to sign this paper and they would do it. So you can't mess up a, a motivated sell. You just can't, it's impossible. But if you don't send out enough mail pieces, you'll never get those phone calls. You have to, it's a numbers game. You have to get enough mail going out there. So when people say, ah, oh, direct mail, it's just dead. I would challenge and ask the further question, how often are you direct mailing, if they've even done it before? And secondly, how many were they sending out? I'm not saying 2,000 to 2,500 pieces a month. I'm saying 2,000 to 2,500 pieces a week. Now, if budget's tight, we have had a video, and we can include the link, where we tell you how to drive for dollars and how you can strum up some leads while the budget's tight and maybe really, really tight paycheck to paycheck, that's okay. But know that it also will take a little bit longer to get deals, cause it's a numbers game, okay? Second question is how frequently, this one's a good one, how frequently should I mail? Okay, I hope my writing is uh, good enough for the quality of YouTube. All right, let's go through this. So how frequently, and I hope my spelling's right. I'm not even the best speller. This is another joke that Cody Hoffman has. So how frequently should I mail? between mailing cycles. So if someone just received a piece of mail today, when should I hit that same person with a second piece of mail? So that's what this question's referring to, okay? I want you to send out mail weekly, but how often in between should each person receive mail? That's what this is referring to. We are on an eight week cycle, okay? So if you are gonna be mailing on week one, they're also gonna get it on week eight, okay? So that's how it keeps going. So every eight weeks, that same person is getting mail. They're getting another marketing piece. Week two is week nine. Week three is week 10. They're always getting mail every eight weeks, okay? So that's how frequent it should happen. Here's the crazy thing. You talk to the gurus in sales, or you talk to any sales floor, or you talk to any sales company, Guess how many times it takes, on average, how many hits, how many touches, how many pieces of mail, or how many pieces of marketing need to get to that person's hands before they commit to using that company. The average is five and 12 times. Crazy! So if you're only mailing them once, twice, three times, four times, I'm still telling you it's not enough. Don't give up. So when you're gonna ask, how many times should I be mailing these people? The average in the industry is between five and 12 contacts. Keep going. Go, 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 go. Here's a simple story I wanna share with you. I had a student of ours that went through the program, right here in my own market, called me up and says, Cody, I have to thank you. I have to thank you so much. I just did my first deal. And I didn't want them to think, oh, it was me, it was me, it was me. So I said, no, you gotta thank you. Like, give yourself a huge pat on the back 
thank yourself because it was you. You took the action. You went out there and did it. You were the one doing direct mail. You were the one making appointments. You were the one making offers, getting out there and doing it, right? And he says, no, 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 no. I really have to thank you for this one. I said, okay, what do you mean? And he says, um, this individual called me and he'd only mailed this person once, by the way. This individual called me and he said, um, you know what, I'm ready to sell my house and you've been mailing me for like three years, so I figured, uh, you know what, you really know what you're doing and so I'm just gonna go with you, come on over, I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, put a deal together. Here's the beautiful thing, guys. I was the only one at that time using that mail piece and this individual also knew I was the only one. So it was my direct mail that had been hitting this individual for three years. But what is direct mail all about? And what is consistency all about? My mail piece didn't hit this guy's hands when he was ready to sell. So again, it's all about that consistent mailing. Because this individual just went out there and sent mail, guess what? It hit his hands when he was saying, I wanna sell. And it looked like my postcard, and so he thought this individual had been mailing him three years. I love it. I still say, congratulations, that's awesome. Uh, so how frequently? Every eight weeks, eight week cycle, okay? Um, should each one, let's see, and if it ends up getting too low, I'm gonna have my trusty cameraman tell me if it ends up getting out of focus. Um, let's see, our next one though is um, phone numbers for each list, okay? What I mean by that, guys, is you really wanna know your numbers, your data, and you really wanna track this. How do you do it? So when you have a tax delinquent list, an eviction list, a code violation list, a high equity owner occupied, a high equity non-owner occupied, all these different lists, right? When you're sending out mail, are you just sending it out and all going to the same phone number? No. Each list needs its own separate number. The company we use is CallRail. So you can buy those numbers. I don't want you to buy eight cell phones with eight different numbers. That's not the point. My point is go to CallRail, callrail.com. That's a great company that we use. And you buy the numbers through them. And when they, you put on each marketing piece will have its own phone number so that you can track numbers. So then when people call in that postcard, you already know when that phone is ringing what postcard they're calling from. So you already know if it's a high equity play or if it's a distressed situation like a divorce list or a tax delinquent list. So you already know when your phone's ringing where it's coming from. So really, really key things. Get a phone number. We own like 30 numbers now from all of our tracking. It's crazy how quick it can happen. Uh, but get a phone number for each marketing piece. The other thing uh, about tracking that way is tracking your numbers is at the end of each month, every now and again you're gonna see business should be growing every month. I don't want anyone ever plateauing saying, oh, we consistently get eight grand every single month and it's just a plateau. I don't want that. I want it continually growing. And so as you're sending out this direct mail, you're gonna see that at the end of the month, you still have some money right here that you can invest in direct mail or in your marketing. What you don't want to do is have your mind tell you where you should place that money. You don't want to say, hey, I've got $1,000 extra, I might as well try this, right? No, you want to be able to look at your numbers and say, my goodness, tax delinquent is working so well right now and there's still another 5,000 names that I haven't mailed to. Now you're letting data tell you where to invest your money. This is crucial. Know your numbers. That's where this phone number will help. That's where you can track and say, okay, what's my hottest list and what's giving me the best ROI, return on investment, okay? Um, what should it look like? Guys, this is crucial, right? What postcard? We still in uh, vision on that one? Perfect, okay. So what postcard, what should it look like? Let me tell you the secret sauce in any company. I don't care if you are in uh, real estate, I don't care if you're an insurance agent, a painter, a contractor, a banker, a lawyer, a doctor, I don't care. There's three things that have to be in play when you're marketing. It's the holy grail of marketing. 
It's the right people at the right time with the right message. If you can always send out your marketing and it's always going to the right people at the right time with the right message, you have voila, found the holy grail. That is marketing 101. So what postcard is crucial? Let's say you got a postcard in the mail and you're gonna be like, what the crud is this? I'll explain. <laughs> All right, and we'll put this on there, okay? Let's say you get a postcard with a dead spider tipped upside down and he's blah, he's dead. When you see this dead spider, you instantly know that you are being marketed by a pest control company, right? It's easy, you know it. And the other one you always see is, you'll see like this house back here and it's a beautiful, cute house and out here in the yard is a sign and it says sold and there's some money down here and down here and instantly you know you're being marketed by a realtor, right? That he can list your home and sell your home. Here's what I'm telling you, cut out all the pictures. People don't wanna be sold. They don't wanna be marketed to. So what you want is something intriguing that makes people have to read what the heck is this? You want people to do that, right? You don't need brand with spiders. You don't need a house with a sell sign or cash in people's hands. You see this guy doing like, no, kill it. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Postcards should be very, very simple. So don't put any pictures on it. Just simply have writing. That's it. Just have writing and do it in a hand font, right? A handwritten font. So when you're out there, here's the message. Our tribe uses one that we have dialed in for the right message to the right people at the right time that we use in the tribe that I love. And essentially, here's what it is. You're going to just keep it like in a handwritten font. So that's one thing. Handwritten font. And keep no pictures. Let's put that on there again. A lot of those will go to the garbage and then simple message. You don't want them to have to read for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds to realize what is being said. You want that message, you got three seconds from the time that they are going in the house and they have this stack of 10, 15 items in their hand and they're walking in and they're like, garbage, 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 what's this? That's what you want. You want instant attention to your marketing piece and not be caught up in all the pictures and all the fluff, right? So what do you do? The simple message. It can be as simple as introduce who you are and then directly what you're doing. Interested in buying your home at 123 Main Street. For a fair cash offer, call me at. So a short, brief message, but is right to the point and it makes them have to read it to even know what's going on because there's no pictures trying to sell it. I don't like pictures. I don't even put pictures of myself on it. I keep it so plain Jane, plain simple. So these are the simple, easy tips of direct mail. And I'm gonna go over them real quick with you one more time. The first one, is it dead? No. I love when people say it's dead because that just means more deals for Cody Hoffine, right? So don't listen to it. And if someone tells you it's dead, Ask them, how often are you sending out direct mail? How many pieces a week are you sending out direct mail? See if they are even in the place that you would trade places with them or even qualified to give you that answer. Number two, how many postcards? I say jump all in, go broke doing it. Like I want you to either wholesale a deal or die trying. That sounds so brutal, I know, but get out there and either wholesale a deal or die trying, right? 2,000, 2,500 pieces. Three, how frequently should I mail? That is an eight week mail cycle. So if someone receives a mail today, eight weeks later, they're getting hit for the second time. The average contacts, so the average time you need to hit them with, with marketing is between five and, 12, uh, five and 12 times before they actually act upon it. But you will get people on the first time, just like a student right here in Utah that only mailed them once 
but the actual individual had received mail for three years, okay? Four, phone numbers for each list, meaning tax delinquent, uh, high equity, uh, code violation, eviction, all of these lists need their own separate marketing number on the postcard. Go to CallRail, buy those numbers, and ultimately you can now start tracking piece by piece what it is that is doing well for you and performing well for you in your market. And then five, what's in a postcard? That is keep it simple. No pictures, no pictures of yourself, dead spiders, house, cash, nothing. Keep it so simple in a handwritten font with a simple message. Looking to buy your home at 123 Main Street for a fair cash offer, call me at, just like that, okay? These are simple, simple five tips on how you can make direct mail work for you. Again, it accounts for 50% of my gross revenue for 2018. Am I gonna keep doing it in 2019? Absolutely. I hope this video has helped. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and also the bell so that it alerts you when we upload new videos. Also, I want you to put down below and comment if you are gonna be doing direct mail and what list you're going to be sending out to. I'd love to hear your comments down below and I will also comment in and we'll go from there. Take care guys, God bless, see you on the next video.